Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, a fine dining bistro. Welcome to Cafe 36. That's not so fine. The plates look like they've been picked up at the local flea market. We are losing 10000 a month. A well-intentioned owner is desperate. What's at stake is my dream. You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. His loyal wife couldn't be any more supportive. And I'm very proud of my husband to say, take this chance. But with a head chef that is clueless. It's the most expensive vegetable on the market. You want that? It's come from the different part of the world, chef. It comes from the different part of the world. Are you listening to this? A sous chef with a bad attitude. No, I didn't. You said you got one there, and it's two veggies. I said three. Look at the rhymes. Guys full of shit. I'm a better chef than Pinto. And a waitstaff that is ready to mutiny. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Pinto has one speed, and that speed is fuck you. What are you doing? You're not a real chef, are you? Gordon is ready to crack the whip. We work at it. Now, come on! In an attempt to turn this nightmare back into a dream. It's hard when you just put your faith in something you really believe and believe and believe, and it's still not coming. It hurts. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. LaGrange, Illinois, a well-to-do commuter town outside of Chicago. Terry and Carol were high school sweethearts here. Two years ago, they fulfilled a dream and bought Cafe 36, an upscale French bistro. There you are. Oh, thank you very much. And for you, sir, my dream was to have my own restaurant and be my own boss. OK, thank you. I'm 58 years old is at a time when most people are thinking about retirement. I'm just going to head out of the way for a while, unless you... Okay, 6.30. Unless you want me to do something. I was very nervous with the whole idea, but let's try. Let's go forward with the dream that he wants to do. Okay, talk to you later. It gets me upset that sometimes he doesn't delegate. I'll do the vacuuming. I'll clean the bathrooms. I'll get the bar stocked. Leave this here for Terry. You I go do what you got to do, then we'll go smoke. Terry, why are you doing this work? And you have a staff standing back there. Why are you doing it? OK. And the onion soup? And the onion soup. It's coming up. That's coming up right now. Pino, he's really a great chef. The food is tasty, it's good, and it's done right. Pinto's sanitation skills aren't the greatest. He, uh, he tastes a lot of his food as he's making it. The running joke is, you know, do you want a side of saliva with that? I don't like sticking my fingers in food. I'll give you a whole thing. I think that Cafe 36 would be a better restaurant without Pinto. But well, nobody's calling out tickets, so I don't know, you know? I mean, it's just somebody's got to be in charge. This is the problem. Terry and Carol keep talking about how Pinto is so awesome. And everybody else knows Pinto really can't run a kitchen. Table 13 waited 25 minutes for a house salad and a soup. The customer's reaction in the restaurant is very positive. Mine is not cooked. They were raw. I'm going to send mine back. Really, it's, it, we're hurting at this time. We'll have nights that we'll only see six or eight people for dinner service. We just don't understand what's not working. I am so sick to my stomach. I have chest pains. Carol and I have never taken a paycheck since we started the business. Here's the bills. More. More bills. I really love my husband. I want his dream to come true, that's all. It's that drive and that passion of the dream to say we want to make it happen. Thank you. <sighs> Cafe 36. OK. Here comes Ramsey. Wait. I just saw him walk by the window. Hi. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Good afternoon. Nice sir. to see you. Pleasure to have you with us. My name is Terry Gilmer. I'm Jerry. one of the owners. This is my wife, Carol. Ah. How do you do? How are you? Very nice to meet uh, you. My, very my happy pleasure. Happy to have you here. I'm so very happy to be here. Very excited. What kind of restaurant are you running? We try to style ourselves after what we call an American bistro. American we try bistro. to have fresh seafood, steaks, chops, sandwiches, uh, pasta. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. taste. Okay. Right over here, sir. 
Well, the restaurant's big. How many seats have you got? Uh, we can seat about 85 in the main dining room. Right. And how many's booked for lunch today? We have 11 people in the restaurant right wow. now, and that's unfortunately a little bit of a typical day for us. Uh -huh. This is Douglas. Douglas uh, will be your Douglas, server today. When Chef Ramsay walked through our doors, you know, I was feeling really good. And I thought, you know, this is going to be great. Uh, the specials today, the uh, risotto today is a uh, wild mushroom. That's pretty good. I'm dying to taste the risotto. OK. Yeah. Uh, this fascinates me. I've never seen a duck and a strawberry together. Yes. Well, you yeah. have good chance to try it. And I'll take that rare, please. Hi, rare. Thank sure. you so much. The of the day is a sautéed Atlantic salmon. I serve an awful lot of them, but I'm not a big fan of any crepes at all. Doug, it's a special. I know. OK, so the crepes aren't special. No, I don't think so. OK. Uh, <laughs> well, why don't we give them a shot? Then let's give me. them a shot. Yeah, exactly. Then you can tell me. I love that honesty. Right. Let's go for the crepes. I know not to order the crepes, because they were frozen. Frozen crepes are crap. I got three courses. Pinto, please fire the crepe risotto and the duck salad, please. For Chef Ramsay to coming in, it's, it's very exciting. Am I nervous? No. I think everything is good. Always makes me feel nervous when I sit next to plastic grapes caked in dust. And the plates look like they've been picked up at the local flea market or the dollar shop. Is this the normal um, quite so lunch? Is normally this? Lunches, we average three or four people. Three or four? Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the problems is we don't get the food out in time for it to do a business lunch. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Let me go check on your food. Certainly. Sir. You ready? He wants a duck salad rare. That doesn't look very rare, right? No, I'll get it. You know what? Bring out the whole thing. The guy's full of shit. I'm ready for him, man. Yeah. No wonder no one comes for lunch. It's taking this long. Coming out way too slow. Well, we fired it all. Does food always take this long? Yeah. I see your food put up. I was just going to go grab it. I'm relying on the Chicago the suburbs train being pushed through the dining room is so old-fashioned. All right, Chef. Wow. Wild mushroom the train. The plane is it. hot. That's the wild mushroom risotto. Yeah. And oh. your duck salad. Rare. Yeah. Starburns. Place are dirty. They're just old plates, or? Yeah. OK. Risotto. And I really got nervous when he started eating. But I believe that the food here is well well above excellence. The risotto's exploded, it's mush, and it just disintegrates in your mouth. And it's very salty. We'll bypass that. Don't ask him to make another one. Way too salty. Little rice is mushy. OK. Just telling you what he's saying. That's fine. The risotto came out nice. It was good. It was really good. I always know that risotto was overcooked all the time. When Gordon Ramsay comes in here and tells him this is mush, this is you know, it's like, yeah, I've been saying that for months, boy. Orange strawberry duck. Right. Oh. Jesus. What a bizarre combination. What's with the walnuts? What are they doing? Candied them. The candied walnuts. Candied walnuts. As if we need more sweet on there. That definitely didn't work. Pinto, the crepes. OK. When you see a chef putting those ingredients together, it's rather sad, really. Clearly, no one's controlling him, and he hasn't got a fucking clue. OK, mm. chef, the next course, your salmon crepes. They come out like that normally? All the time. What have they done? Chop them up? Um, no, that's how he makes them all the time. He just puts extra on top, I believe. Who makes the crepes? Um, I believe the crepes are store-bought. No. Yeah. Damn, look at that. And this is the speciality. I'm fed up with eating crap of the day. When you think of a crepe, you think of something nice, light, crispy, tasty, not something mushy and hideous. That is shocking. I thought you were looking out for me. Are you taking this away? Oh, yes, please. That's yeah. looking up for you. Just even going to bypass the pigs. I don't like it. None of them. I don't think there was anything he even said was OK. I was just in shock. And where did you train from? I trained uh, in Italy. And working in an Italian restaurant? Correct. I thought the risotto was an insult. It was mush. OK. Where is the risotto rice? It's in the cooler. Can you get it to me? Yes. I'm just amazed that you lived in Italy that length of time. You studied there, you worked there, and they didn't even teach you how to make risotto. What's that date? 2.20. What's the date today? 28. You got the balls to walk in here on a Thursday and serve that shit from a week ago. It's mush. There was no bad on uh, it's still good. Nothing smelled bad. Why in your tiny mind do you think it's still fresh from last Saturday? It was in the 
A reaching cooler. A reaching cooler confirms in your mind that it's fresh. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, you know, this is really weird for me. This has been going on for a while. Pinto tries to stretch the food as far as it can go, and sometimes too far. Bring me everything in that fridge as a week old. You call yourself the executive chef? You should be ashamed. You served me risotto from a week old. Oh, my god. All this is from last week. I was very shocked to find out uh, that we were not serving fresh products. It was such a horrible feeling. And then I was getting very angry and mad inside myself to say, how can my staff do this? Chopped clams. We're keeping clams from a week ago. We'll smell go. that. What does it smell of? That doesn't smell good. Smell? Congratulations. You haven't managed to kill anybody off. What are you doing? You're not a real chef, are you? Yes, I am. What? Any chef that keeps hold of that crap in his fridge for a week, two weeks, in my mind, has given up. A lack of caring, a lack of responsibility, and more importantly, ignorance. Fuck me, what more can you say? Coming up, this fucking thing. What's got Gordon running circles around Cafe 36? Embarrassing. Could it be that the chefs can't get any food out of the kitchen? I think they gotta catch the shrimp first. Could it be that the waiters are completely fed up? It's gonna be like a five minutes. All right, they told me that like 30 minutes okay. ago. Pinto has one speed, and that's fuck you. Or could it be that the owners are in denial? You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. One thing's for sure. We don't know our ass from a whole nother. Gordon oh. is in for the challenge of the year. You're not a real chef, are you? That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Carol and Terry have put everything they have into Cafe 36. Unfortunately, this restaurant may be too far gone to save. That lunchtime, now that was a tough one, that one. Are you trained in the business? Have you had a Russian no, before? No, I have not. No, right. not me. Have you ever had a Russian before? Absolutely not. You've never had a Russian no. before? No. Terry, sorry, how much did you pay for the business? A million two five. No, million no. one. Million one, I'm sorry. We put our own savings, okay. IRA accounts. We had a large four-bedroom home that we sold and used the, the proceeds and the escrow from that to put into the business. And you're here, lunch and dinner? Yes. Carol drops me off in the morning. <laughs> we only have one car between us. Uh, we sold the other one. Everything is very scary right now for Terry and I to see where we're headed. It's hard. It's hard when you just put your faith in something and really believe and believe and believe, and it's still not coming. I respect the level of sacrifice here, but you're pondering and querying to why the business isn't coming through the door. Correct. It's on the back of the food. When food's crap, it's crap. The chef's cooking me a risotto with rice that's eight days old. I, I just, I'm still in shock. Yeah. You have to focus on the wrong, not ignore it. Right. Yes. We certainly got an eye opener today. Yeah, I'm panicking <laughs> on both of your behalf. I'm, I'm so sorry, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, you know that? No. Don't take it the wrong way, please. Right. No, I understand. And I'm here to make this work. You must understand that. And uh, that's, you know, the objective from day one. Um, good you. to catch Thank up. You. Yeah, I, we got Thank a, you. We got, we, got, we, got, we got a mountain to climb, and yes. uh, it's, uh, it's a tough one. As the staff gets ready for dinner service, Gordon ventures into the kitchen to do a more comprehensive investigation. Pesto, vinaigrette, looks like oil out of my car engine. Unbelievable. Everything's frozen. Frozen and defrosted. This place is a mess. Pinto, certified exec. What's going on here? What's all this stuff floating in water? That's a group are taken out from the freezer and keep it fresh frozen. Fresh frozen? Yes, sir. There's no such thing. It's either fresh or it's frozen. I understand. What's this in water? It's a salmon, chef. Frozen? Yeah. It was a fresh frozen. If you keep it frozen, fresh frozen, it tastes more fresh. It's mad. It is. You're making all this fresh stuff, freezing it, and then taking it out two portions at a time per day. Because it doesn't sell enough. And what? If, if you had a plan of business like this. Nothing to do with business. That's lazy. Everything's frozen. Trout stuffing. So we take it out. We slow thaw it. It's, yeah, it's cold, cold, boom, cold. Yeah, slow thaw. We stuff the trout, then we refreeze the trout. Yes. I 
rest my case, certified jerk. Schefter, the grouper, was a strong smell. That's it. That's it. A chef's uh, opinion. It's dinner time, and Gordon is about to see how this fine dining restaurant is anything but fine. Hello, Hi. good evening. Welcome to Cafe 36. Welcome this evening. Would you care to see our wine list? I'll start here with you. You're Alice, up. how are they? Yeah. They're terrific. Would you mm -hmm. be able to do the salmon with your sauce? Sure, I can do that. We need a pair of cobia and a salmon, too. I'm very nervous, very nervous and very scared, and we're just hoping for the best. Escargot? What is that? This is the butter that we use for the escargot. It's parsley, chive, garlic. The butter's frozen as well. What don't you freeze? Here's Chef Ramsay, one of the best chefs in the world, telling Pinto that you're doing shit wrong. In fact, you're doing it bad. It was great to see Pinto eat a little humble pie. What stuff don't you freeze? Give me one ingredient. Like a calamari comes in. Like the calamari. Comes in quick. We never freeze it. So the only stuff you don't freeze is the stuff that comes in frozen. Astounded by what he's just witnessed in the kitchen, Gordon seeks out the owners. Terry and Carol, I'm panicking. Pinto, it's crap. I um, I don't get what he's trying to do there, Jimmy, in terms of all this fresh, frozen stuff. Everything in, fresh, cut up, portioned, frozen. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and most customers are still waiting for their food. I feel like I'm drinking more than I'm eating. <laughs> you know, that's probably the reason I don't wear a watch, because it takes a head to long here. The nightmare of Cafe 36 is still food time. Not being able to get your food out of the kitchen really makes your job as a server difficult, because that's pretty much the description of your job, to serve. I think they got to catch the shrimp first. Is this slug? Everything seems so slow. Yes, sir. If you have one more person, then it goes faster. Yeah. If you had one more person, it will go faster? Yes, sir. Eduardo, no wonder you've gone so old. You've aged, waiting for the last main course. <laughs> huh? While the kitchen is struggling to cook the food, Gordon also sees a problem with the delivery. Another departure. Holy crap. I'm not aware of any particular reason why we serve on cards. I thought people got pushed into a, right. a mortuary on trolleys, no? Right. Not serving food. Oh, jeez. <laughs> would you like to hold the plate by the hand, or would you want to push a trolley all day long? I would rather hold them by the hand. When the orders finally make it to the tables, customers find it's not worth the wait. No, this is rare. It's rare. Is that what you ordered? I ordered no, medium. medium. Bloody rare. Yeah, I might have to send this one back. I'll be right back. Please. The New York's supposed to be medium. Huh? The New York's supposed to be medium. What is it? Medium rare, right? They said Ticket medium. says medium. Okay. They said medium when I was here. Why don't you just put it under the grill, Pinto, as if we're in a position to argue? My things come back, it doesn't mean I'm a bad cook. And it's not just Chef Pinto's cooking that catches Gordon's eye. Well, these are here for? They're not even seasoned asparagus, are they? No, not right now. They're very expensive. They're very expensive, so why have you got them on? A veggie of the day. A veggie of the day? Yes. Yeah. Aren't you bothered about the cost? Yes, yeah. it comes from the different part of the world, Chef. We, we can get it. It comes from the different part of the world. Are you listening to this? Yes, Chef. It's the most expensive vegetable on the market. You want that? And it's out of season. And you've just put them on four dishes. This is unbelievable. Tonight, I'm starting to see new cooking techniques that I've never, ever seen before. Slow thaw, fresh frozen, but what's becoming really clear is that he seriously is taking this lovely couple for a ride, and it's got to stop. This is true about Pinto. He's telling you he's screwing you. Is that, could that be? I hope not. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. During dinner service, owners Carol and Terry were stunned by Gordon's criticism of their head chef, Pinto. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. He opened our eyes to a lot of things throughout the restaurant that people have been taking advantage of us, so we have to take a good, hard look at everything. 
After a long, difficult dinner service, the customers who have eaten are not exactly thrilled. Chicken's a little overdone. Okay, so too soupy and the chicken is overdone. I didn't eat much of my salad because I didn't really care for the dressing. And those who haven't been served are not willing to wait. We got here at five after seven. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> five, five minutes. I'll give five minutes. And that's it. Okay. okay. All right, table five is going to walk out in five minutes. Or is this the pace we move at? Is this the fastest we go? Pinto has one speed, and that speed is fuck you. How long has it been? Gosh. Almost two and a half hours. Some of the customers have given up completely on Cafe 36 and are leaving without even eating an appetizer. It's just been a long day. I have to really take it all in. It hurts. After a rough night, Gordon confronts the staff. Overall, honestly, pretty disappointing, both in the kitchen and the dining room. There's one thing in here that I would change instantly. On the back of my experience today, and that's you. Why? You are the executive chef. You're supposed to be a leader, a motivator. You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. Because the big problem in this restaurant, Pinto, is in the kitchen. Fresh frozen, slow thaw. I think that Pinto deserved every single solitary second of that ass reaming that he got from Gordon. If this was your restaurant, would you be freezing everything, portioning it, and then dropping in bowls of water to defrost it to recook it? Okay. Yes or no? No, I wouldn't. Embarrassing! Do you think I enjoy standing there and listening to this? You know, I'm a proud man. Get the message. Now show me your pride. Chef, because I'm fucking waiting. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, the two people behind you, it's them you're dragging down. That's why I'm pissed. So cut the bullshit. Get ready for some changes because Cafe 36 needs it urgently. Good night. After witnessing a night of inefficient and bizarre cooking techniques, Gordon's first priority is to implement changes in the kitchen. If there's one thing this restaurant needs right now, it's something authentic, yes? Yes. This restaurant needs a good risotto. You, you and me, we're going to cook a risotto together. Here is all our fresh ingredients. When I say fresh, I mean fresh. I bought them myself this morning. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Let's go. Cooking with the chef Ramsey was, it was pressure. There was a lot of pressure was on. This is just a really nice, simple uh, porcini risotto. Mushrooms in. That's sauteed already. Finished with Parmesan cheese and a little knob of butter. Make sure you're happy with it. Mushroom risotto. First change, yeah, risotto, yeah. Second change, we'll be taking the plates out tonight by hand, faster and not running up and down with this fucking thing all the way up. Hey, we're going to carry the plates, yeah, by hand. When Chef Ramsay took the carts off the floor, it was great. I hated them from day one, so to me, it was like, yes. <laughs> I do have a usage for the trolleys, because tonight we'll come up with a goat's cheese salad special where you'll be dressing the salad, gives us more time in the kitchen, and we'll be doing, like, goat cheese fritters. I absolutely love the idea of having the salad made at the table side. Sort of a little bit of entertainment and showmanship. Yeah, and mix greens in. Touch of salt, touch of pepper, honey mustard vinaigrette. Yeah. I goat cheese fritters. Yeah, one, two, three, go. Bang. Salad on, madame, and madame. So, light, vibrant, exciting. And more importantly, we're changing today. We're changing. changing. We're changing big time, yes? As Gordon starts to turn around Cafe 36, he knows that what really needs to change is Terry. I'm going to identify your uh, weaknesses and improve your strengths. Right. And, you know, Pinto is a big weakness. And don't ever be intimidated by controlling chefs. And you've got to right. be strong. You must be strong. Absolutely. And I can see that now. And I think a lot of it was. I'm more involved in, you know, the mundane daily operation, the mm -hmm. things that I shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. and not watching the things that I should, and I mm -hmm. can see that now. What's at stake is my dream, 
and I'm not going to let anybody take it away from me. And you have got to start being firm, because if you're not firm, they're never ever going to respect you. Next, I almost fired him on the spot. Order on Pinto. Tempers flare in the kitchen. Talk to each other, guys. Then erupt in the dining room. Cancel my entree. Cancel your entree. Right, I'm leaving. Pinto, executive chef, certified dick. Threatening the grand reopening of Cafe 36. What do we do? How can this happen to us? Hi, good evening. Welcome this evening. Four. We have you right over here. Lots of people coming. All right, let's rock and roll. Hi, how are Hello, you? Hello, how are you tonight? Good. The feeling going into service. There you are, man. Getting all charged up and ready to go. Let's all pull together and let's get this roll. The chef has prepared a porcini mushroom risotto today. My special salad is a goat cheese fritter salad. Cheese salad. OK. Two salads. I'm going to have that filet, please. I like your filet. Uh, medium. OK, take control now, yeah? You listen and say yes or no, yeah? Yes, yes. Let's Too go. Masala. There you go, fill it. Yeah, medium on, yes? New York strip medium, yeah? What's next, please? Hey, I got a crab cakes, a smoked salmon appetizer, and an onion soup, please. Right now, I'm pretty stressed out about tonight. I don't want anything to go like last night. We're trying to make this thing smooth the operation tonight. Two risotto, a trout, and a scallop. OK, good. Let's go. Two risotto, yes? Such a presentation. First one I've ever done. Thank you. It looks good. The goat cheese is excellent. But while the special salads are a huge hit, they haven't had their appetizer yet on this table. It's going to take a few minutes. How long has it been since we've been half hour or so? Cafe 36's characteristically slow service continues to leave customers waiting. 45 minutes already. Right? Well, we go with that one now, yeah? Two salmon, one shank, one 36 bill, yes? Working, chef. Working, yeah. How long? Three minutes, four minutes. I'm ready, I'm on it. Pinto, change gear. You always know told changing gear? Yep. Unfortunately, you're still in neutral. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, to, I swear it should be the next ticket up. I'm tired of working someplace where I can't get the food out, I can't service my customers. Five has been waiting no less than an hour and 15 to an hour. It's going to be like a five minutes. All right, they told me that like 30 minutes okay. ago. I swear to God. I just think Pinto's making this crap up as he goes along. It's all a lie. Unbelievable. Oh my God. You know, red veggies for one, for two there. That, that, that's what I said. Okay, say it over and over. First time you said one, then two, no, and then I one. No, I didn't. You said you got one there, and it's two I know. veggies. I said three. Look at the book. Look at the book. Hey, I got shit to do. I, I know. Bye. Pinter, we have to speed up over here now, yeah? Yeah? We'll work as a team, please, yeah? yeah? Last night, you worked as individuals. Tonight, we're going to work as a team, yeah? Yes, yeah. Let's go. I'm not having food hanging around tonight. No, no chance. They just got theirs. They were seated before us, so. It's been, it's been a while, though. Chef Pinto, you lied to me and told me it's almost ready. How long, baby? It's going to take a few minutes, bro. I can't fire all these pans. I just can't do it. We're halfway through service, and the good news is we've sold 42 salads, which is great. Sadly, the bad news is that Barney and Pinto, they don't like each other, and that's affecting the service. Things are slowing down, and customers are now starting to complain. Damn. We should have another New York medium. All right? No. You guys aren't even working together. Come on, Barney, you got to keep it driving. Don't let it sink. Let's go. I don't know where we are. I don't know what you guys are firing. You haven't called anything out. Huh? I mean, I don't oh, know okay. what's going on. Pinto doesn't listen to me, and I don't, there's got to be a better system than what we're doing, because it's just not working. It's been a long waited. This is cold. It isn't even hot. And not even the center is hot. I'm going to go ahead and take these. This is the entree size portion, correct? That's not an entree. That's appetizer. Pinto really can't cook on the line, and Pinto really can't run a kitchen. On the ticket, it's got risotto dinner. Unbelievable. Barney, talk to your cook, yeah? Let's go. make it a larger portion. And it's too thick. Pour some more okay. stock in there. OK, I'll thin it down. Oh, my god. Now we're pulling that down. We're going down, boys. Just, just two seconds, you. You as well, yeah? Just come here for two seconds. Yeah, I'm not doing that in front of the customer. Come here, you. None of you are talking. You have got to talk together. He needs you, yeah, you need him. So we go back in there and we work at it. If he's sauteing, you've got to expedite. He's trying to expedite, plate, and cook. He can't get in front of the tickets, OK? Yes, now, come on. 
I agree entirely with what Chef Ramsey had to say about our performance this evening. We weren't working together as a team, and it hurt us. It should be up in just moments. So all I'm doing is lying to people right now. That's it. You know, I'm safe. With some of his customers still waiting for their food and others giving up altogether, Brian reaches his breaking point. Now I gotta say two things that are really hard. You're hiding and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, I swear it should be the next ticket up. Tonight, the waiters of Cafe 36 took a lot of heat for the problems in the kitchen, and Brian is truly frustrated. Now I gotta say two things that are really hard. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. Brian made some very harsh comments that were extremely out of place, and it made me very upset to the point that I almost fired him on the spot. But this has gone on way too far. He's not. If you don't like working it. here, then keep your opinion to yourself. I want Terry to start telling everybody what to do instead of letting the inmates run the asylum. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. After experiencing yet another disappointing dinner service, Gordon is curious to hear what the head chef has to say. OK. Um, Pinto, what do you think about tonight's service? It was, it was excellent. It really was. Everybody got involved. What kitchen were you in? Pardon me? Uh, Barney, truthfully, is that the way you saw service tonight? No, I thought it was bad. It was really rough. Once again, complete different opinions. You're right, though. Service was terrible. Nothing was coming together. No communication, no coordination, no teamwork. Customers waited tonight. They waited big time. What did we do? What's going on? How can this happen to us? What did we do? Let me just give you three major issues that's wrong with this restaurant. The first issue is the service is way too slow. The second problem, the food is too inconsistent. Inconsistency is a killer. The third reason, and one of the most important reasons why this restaurant is not busy, it's not contemporary. A 1970s restaurant trying to compete in the 2008 market. We're behind the times. We are behind the times. OK, I'm going now. I've, I'm working all night. You know, by the time I see you tomorrow morning, we should have a well-put-together plan. Good night. That night, Gordon and his team went to work, doing away with the restaurant's old-fashioned and outdated look, creating a more contemporary restaurant. Right, good, good morning. morning. How are you feeling? No, I'm thrilled. A big day today, excited. yes? Today's relaunch day. We're going to turn it around, yeah, and put it back on the map. In we go. Come through, come through, come through. Oh, wow. oh my How God. cool is this? <gasps> oh, It's God. modern. This is awesome. Oh, 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 wow. We've got a black and white color theme. Yes. And who knew I love black and white so much? Oh, my God. It's been brought up into the 21st century. Beautiful. It's a new restaurant. When I walked in the door, I just instantly felt alive. We've got rid of the old fuddy-duddy stuff. And now it's a really nice, sharp, cutting-edge feel. Uh, I absolutely am getting choked up. It's just, what a dream. Hey, look at the plates. I... No more mismatched china. All the same. It's wonderful. It's amazing. Beautiful. Now that we have matching plates, <laughs> it looks like we know what we're doing back here. The booze have been upholstered. I love the black. Got new chandeliers. I'm just so thankful. It's unbelievable. A restaurant can't just survive on a new decor. Yes, it needs a new menu. You have to go with it. So we've gone modern, yes, fresh approach, and more importantly, we've condensed the menu. I think the kitchen should respond favorably to the new menu. Unless they screw it up with their usual bullshit, it should work out. It's seasonal as well. We have everything in season. I think that the new menu is going to make the kitchen faster. Before dinner, we'll make sure we taste one of everything, yes? So you know what you're selling. Tonight, head chef Pinto is cooking from the newly designed menu and has one more chance to prove himself to Chef Ramsay. First of all, just look at the difference. Appearance, plates, portion size. 
Start from the top. Onion soup gratiné, yeah? Perfect for the winter. Crab cakes, grilled chicken sandwich, a grilled albacore tuna, Mediterranean ragu, filet mignon tartare. Uh, you like steak tartare? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and then one of my favourites, the duck confit. Have a little taste. Get familiar with the uh, taste and textures. I love that tartare. Wonderful. It's a whole new beginning, and Chef Ramsay did that for us. Let's take advantage of tonight, and let's show LaGrange, yeah, what we're made of. With the new menu and decor, Carol and Terry face one of the most important nights ever at Cafe 36. Well, welcome to Cafe 36. We're glad to have you here at our grand reopening. The mm -hmm. personality has changed. It's more Carol and Terry's. When the orders come in, can we call out the orders so we got some form of vibrance in here a little right. bit, yes? Good job. Yeah. And what do you think of the new menu? I think it's sharp. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, Good. it's night and day. Tonight, we have to be faster, yeah, and keep the standards up, yes? Right, chance. Yes. Big, big, big night tonight. And personally, I've never, ever wanted a dinner service to work as well as tonight because of Terry and Carol, because they so deserve it. And they're really endearing. But I honestly hope that Pinto doesn't screw this one up. Please, not tonight. Order in. Order on, Pinto. All right, we're coming up with Pinto. Risotto. Order on. Mario, one crab cakes. As the orders make their way to the dining room. Brian. Your food's here. The dinner service gets off to a good start. That's good. Oh, I should have got done. So you just got your entrees. How is everything so far? Really good. Good, good. good. Okay. Delicious. Fresh food, simple menu. Love it. All right, am I ever going to get a crab cake with this? Right, talk to me. Next table coming, please. Mario, I got a four. Four crab cakes. But barely an hour into service, and the kitchen's bad habits are back. Table number, please. 13, please. 13. How long? Just like uh, six minutes. Oh, my God, it's still not ready? I got every burner full, man. If one empties, I put something else on it, OK? Pinto, we have to go a little bit now, yeah? When you're looking at all these tickets, sometimes things can be a little slow. Pinto, if we go quiet, nothing's happening. Okay. We need some form of voice in here. Pinto was running the tickets. Well, Pinto got behind, but he's the chef. And he should be in control of the situation. All right, come on, guys, you've got to talk to each other. Yes, yeah, chef. We just gotta to talk to each other, guys. Pinto. 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 Executive chef certified dick. Once again, Pinto's inefficiency in the kitchen is upsetting both customers we want to eat. and staff. I'm just pissed off. I just can't take this, man. I hope Terry strains us out. The real problem right now is they can't seem to finish any food back there. It's just like really bad sex. It keeps going on and on, and at some point, you just wish it would be over. Cancel my entree. Cancel your entree? Right, I'm leaving. It's been more than fair. It's been 6.30. Okay. It's been three, three and a half hours. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a little, I've got a pork chop. little hectic tonight. Pinto's got to go. Just stand there doing nothing. I know. I, I agree. Nobody's communicating. No one's even stepping up to the mark. And watch what Barney's doing. Barney's now trying to read the tickets, cook, saute, and expedite. Yeah? And Pinto is just trying to dress the salad. Not good enough. That's not a no, team effort. Not, he, I could see it from Nothing's been directed, now. and it's a it's fucking not, it's joke. No, no, Unbelievable. No. Gordon Ramsay really did give me a swift kick in the butt to say, you know, wake up. If you're going to have your business be a success, you have to take charge. What are we waiting on? Where are we at? So I need us two crab cakes right now. Coming up. All right, come on, food. guys. Hey. I need to get this food out. I got tables I got to turn. We can't fall behind. Thank you, Eddie. Go. All right. Talk to me. What's next? With Terry finally staying on top of his chef. Two steak tartare, apple salad, crab cake. The kitchen gets back on track. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, got our food. Thank you. Two salmon. There's two salmon in the oven. OK, beautiful. Keep it coming, guys. I got to get this dining room turned over. We got a lot of people waiting. I think Terry's eyes have been opened up. A two risottos. Two risotto play right there. You know, you should give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but you should also demand performance out of them. That's all I want is just communication. For the first time since Gordon's arrival, the back of the house. Let's see if we can finish these last two tables strong, shall we? Yeah? Yippee. Let's go. Is in sync with the front. Follow I'm following. Worth yeah. the wait. Worth the wait. You're here to Terry. I'm Terry Hello. and Carol. Yep. And it was Terry who made it happen. You have a beautiful restaurant. Thank you. It is. It's, it's, it's so Stunning. much more beautiful. Yes. And an amazing, amazing, amazing potential. Yeah. Very rare you come across a couple 
today in this industry, on the back of the commitment it takes, the sacrifice, the personal life, you're so unselfish, it's untrue. And you're so perfect for each other, it's extraordinary. And that's quite rare, and I really mean that. I can't tell you what to do with Pinto, but you know my feelings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely but do. But when you make a decision, I hope to hell that you don't make it too late. You talked about change, you know, and that we have to do that, and I can't, yes. you know, hold back any longer. No and more we oldies have to on do the radio. No more. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I've learned is I have to definitely be more aggressive in running my business. I have to take full charge, and I have to change, and I've already changed. You've done so much for us. Yeah. Mm. And it's just an incredible feeling that you've done that for us. Uh, you, you know, you said we had to get rid of the old, and, and back from the 30s. Yes. 30 years ago. Yeah, so we got to... Oh, you guys. Oh, you're so so this is from our oh, own personal crazy. wine collection. Oh, my God, no, I can't take that. Come on. That's a bottle of Chateau Chem 1976. You said I would 30 years ago, so we're past it. No, but, oh, God. Can I keep it here for when I come back? Absolutely. And when I come back, we can have a glass together. We would love that. Would you? Absolutely. Yes. God, what are you two like? You two, honestly. Honestly, you're like the most perfect mum and dad. Unbelievable. Right. Thank you so much. Oh dear, good luck, sir. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you. And you deserve everything. Thank you. you know that. You stand strong. And you listen to this lady. Yes? Yes. Yeah. She's the love of my life. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, darling. Congratulations. So much. There's absolutely uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. And in fact, it's bigger than just a light. I think there's a whole sunshine coming out. Okay. Best wishes. Thank you. Yes? We got work to do, right? Yeah, we do. No, they do. <laughs> That's tough, really tough. What can you say about a couple that have sacrificed so much to get where they have today? And what can you say about a couple that are so devoted to each other? Incredible. I know what you can say. Damn, I hope they succeed, because they deserve to. So much. There is one last footnote to this story. Relaunch night was the last night Pinto worked at Cafe 36. He left the very next day. And Barney was promoted to head chef. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon hits the Big Apple. I'm here on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, about to ring the opening bell on a serious mission to turn around Black Pearl Restaurant. And when the bell rings, Gordon is in for his toughest fight yet. I'm ready. I suppose you actually don't give a fuck. A lobster shack with three feuding owners. You get mad at these two? Yeah. One owner who has thrown in the towel. You're the weakest link in the chain. Another owner who is fed up with his partners. Oh, I get mad at them because I don't think they're doing what they need to do. And we feel exactly the same about him. And a third owner who can't see eye to eye with anyone. This restaurant has every chance of succeeding. You're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. Especially Gordon. Your big, sad fight. Can Gordon get through to these three owners and turn the Black Pearl around? You all look so, so cool as if you don't give a fuck. It's disgusting. Or is this place doomed by its ineffective three-headed monster? Why don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. Incredible. This is a New York City battle you don't want to miss. I've never met an individual that's so full of shit in all my life. How, Gordy? How? Tell me. Gordy. Yeah. You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you, too. Tonight, it's mayhem in Manhattan. You're so full of fucking shit, you'd make a great politician. You know that. My advice would be for you to disappear, and the sooner the better. <laughs> City, restaurant capital of the world.
home to thousands of restaurants vying to be the crown jewel of the city. Try this way, ladies. The Black Pearl just being one. Started by two friends as a small downtown lobster shack, they moved to Midtown, added a third partner, and hoped to become the premier lobster restaurant in Manhattan. I suggested to Brian that we put an ad in the paper to find uh, an investor since we didn't want to spend any of our own money. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. I met Greg and thought that he would be a perfect match. Gentlemen, fish and chips. It was David's concept. And um, I thought the concept was really very good. And I thought it would make some pretty good money. Did we get that 2,500? Because I'm about four grand short of payroll. The problem started when we started to run low on money. It became very frustrating around here. Brian and Greg and I stopped speaking. We would try to communicate by email, text messaging, and everybody got nervous and frustrated. This place is a nightmare for the lack of management. We don't have one voice. Well, I just asked Brian, and he's like, yeah, well, you guys can figure it out. Cool. We always Thanks. figure it out. Well, I know. Because they don't tell us what to do. <laughs> I think Brian's more of a silent partner. If he had a choice, he'd probably just not have to work here at all. This table had a hair in their fries. I don't want to deal with this. You deal with it. Greg is the hardest working owner, but he doesn't make a decision. Who Brian. the fuck put these letters on here? I couldn't tell you. Out of the three owners, I like David the least because his ego tends to get in the way of a healthy atmosphere. Don't touch the tickets, please. The main problem with the Black Pearl is these guys are really stubborn, and if Gordon Ramsay can help us all kind of mesh together, then this place can be phenomenal. New York City, one of the most difficult places ever to open a restaurant. I opened mine 14 months ago, and I've been busting my balls ever since. I'm dying to see how the Black Pearl are doing. Right, the Black Pearl. Here we go. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Good. And you are? Nigel. Nigel. My name's Stephen. Stephen, how are you? We here at the Black Pearl desperately need Gordon's help. We need him to come in and kind of whip all of the owners into shape. How's business? Could be better. But with three owners, and all three of them being over the business, they must be here, what, three or four times a week each, together? No, they're never here together, no. They're no. never here together? No. Is that one of the owners? Yes, yes it, it is. is. Excellent. Hi. What's your name? David Leonard. David, Gordon, nice to see you. You are... One of the three owners. One of the three owners. And are you hands-on or hands-off? Hands-on. Hands-on. And how many days a week are you here? I do three or four. Three or four. OK, good. I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat, maybe start off with a uh, little bowl of chowder, and then maybe have a chat after. I'll be around. When I walked in and first uh, met Gordon, I thought he seemed a bit confrontational. That was not very pleasant. But otherwise, I really had no impression of him. I'll be back with some water for you. Excellent. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. I like your enthusiasm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> What a weird bar. And when you look at the bizarre concoction of the interior, it does confirm that three different people, the owners, of course, decorated it. All right. Wow, that was quick. Now, how many's in the kitchen? How many people? Yeah. Cooks. Oh, three. Three. There you go. Well, thank you. That smells lovely. Did you need more time to look at the menu, or did you um, want to jump No, I don't know, actually. You know that. Um, I'll go for a uh, mussel Bangkok. All right. A mac and cheese lobster, please. And then I'll finish with a lobster roll. If you're looking for the most popular one, it would be the Maine and the Connecticut. Do you know what? Bring me the three of them. All three? All right. Will do. Thank you so much. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> no, you are. Just making sure if you need anything, just yell. If anything's bad, I didn't do it, though, so I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> What was your name? Michael? No. What? Your name? Ha, huh, very funny. Ha, <laughs> huh, you're a kidder. <laughs> when Chef Ramsay joked around with me, I think it added that personal spark of, oh, you know, Chef Ramsay isn't this evil devil that everybody sees him as. Well, the same top, first course. OK, then a lobster mac and cheese after that. Cheese. OK. And he has a chowder right now. Mmm. A little bit watery for chowder, huh? What a shame. Hello, Chef. How are you? Oh, very well indeed. Thank you. Are you? Yeah, Muscles Bangkok. I'm Greg. I'm the chef. Owners. Oh, what are the no, owners? No, I'm not the chef. Trust okay. me. No, you don't want to eat my food. What a way to come from. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank too, you. sir. So there's one more owner to come. Yes, yeah. Brian. So David, Brian, and Greg. Whew. OK, great. Lovely. Oh, right. Confusing. <laughs> uh, thank you. Go ahead. Burn your mouth off. My god. Fuck me, that's hot. 
Lobster mac and cheese. Excellent. Lobster mac and cheese. Wow. Thank you. Speak of the devil, and I'll let you enjoy it. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Yeah. Yourself? Yeah, very well indeed. Thank you. Yes. How did the three of you come to run a restaurant? Originally, David and I had the place uh, down on Avenue A, and then we decided to get out of there. Fascinating. OK, I'm going to tuck into my uh, mac and cheese with lobster. OK, thank you. Gets more and more complicated. I'm thinking we send out all three lobster rolls on separate plates, dressed just like they would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So far, he doesn't like much. What do you mean? Food-wise. The mussels can't taste the mussels because of stupid Thai curry Bangkok broth. Mac and cheese, it's chewy and rich, and the chowder. That watery. It's not how a seafood restaurant should run. This is not going to be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is the Connecticut, or the hot lobster roll. OK. Your, this is the main lobster roll. Main no. lobster roll. Whoops. Connecticut, Maybe. main. Don't worry about that. And this is the New York City lobster roll. New York City. Yes. Connecticut, Maine. Gotcha. All righty. Ah, that's great. Thank you. All right, let's start off with CT. Drawn butter. <laughs> Horrible. Soaking wet bread. It's like eating a fucking wet diaper. So sorry, Connecticut, but I am moving on. Lobster's not seasoned. Land, what a shame. All right, so what did, what did you think of the main? Pretty piss poor, to be honest. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Stephen. What's up? Well, he likes Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. That's his boy. Is he still here? Yeah, he's still upstairs. What's he doing? He's eating. He had uh, three lobster rolls, three different kinds. He had mac and cheese. He had um, Bangkok. David wants to know, is he paying for this? You should definitely give yeah, him a check. Yeah, give him a check. check. I can see that. That'll be fun, huh? After tasting the supposedly best food on the menu, How are you? Gordon gathers the three owners and head chef, Bill. Who oversees the food? I do. The award-winning lobster roll. Bread, soggy. Lobster bland. Do you not season it? Salt, pepper, when you bind it with mayonnaise? No. No. Why not? Well, we get most of our recipes and our ideas from Maine, and it's not the way it's done. Well, they have salt in Maine. I've, I've lived in Maine for three months. I know it very well. Chef Ramsay didn't like our lobster roll, and he said he's lived in Maine for three months. But if he'd lived in Maine for three months, he'd know that a lobster roll is exactly the way we make it. I'm really nervous now. I've never known a chef that's not allowed to season his food. Is this man your chef, or is he your puppet? No, he's my chef. David has this tone of being condescending and knowing it all. How much debt have we got over the house? Quarter mil. Yeah. Yeah. Who has the final say? If one of us presents an idea, we vote on it, and we decide whether we want to go forward with it or not. Is it hard running a business with three partners? It's hard for us, yeah. When was the last time all three of you sat down? We have not, we have not done so. OK. I don't feel that any of you are committed to making this work. Have we fallen out? Oh, yeah, a couple, three times, yeah. So that's yeah. why we don't meet? Yeah. OK. Who fell out with who? Oh, I get mad at them. Why? Because uh, I don't think they're doing what they need to do. And we feel exactly the same about him, of course. Yeah. I felt that Gordon was right about many things, but I think he jumped to conclusions and that we are not committed to Black Pearl. A restaurant run by three passionate owners, no chance. Brian, he works two days a week. David, well, I don't trust him one little inch. And as for Greg, well, he's pissed off with both of them. Basically, in a nutshell, sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. Who am I? Snow fucking white? Coming up, Gordon confirms that three is definitely a crowd. Unfortunately, the appendix out of all three of you is Brian. We don't need him. You get to go home. Really? Yeah. But two doesn't prove to be much better. We're, we have several brains in here. Where the fuck is six? Why don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. And there is definitely one who stands out. Do you know what I've just discovered? Mm. You're so full of fucking shit, you'd make a great politician. And later, Gordon discovers the Black Pearl's little secret. They look Canadian lobsters to me. Yeah, these are Canadian. You fucking amaze me. The award-winning main lobster roll is Canadian. That's all coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. After a frustrating conversation with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to take a look at how the Black Pearl operates during a dinner service, especially on a night that all three owners are there. Hi, how are you? Good, do you recommend? The chowder's good. It's fancy calamari salad. It's really good, I promise. Order up. 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 Order up.
ordering two hot lobster rolls. Where's that fisk, Phil? Coming right now, David. I got a crab cake. It's getting cold. Two lobster rolls and a fried shrimp to beef. Uh, the, the shrimp rolls aren't ready yet. What happened with that? I don't have a fried shrimp french fries. So when you and Brian are here together on the same day, Brian takes care of the We're never here together the same day. Oh, you never here? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was weird having David in here expediting because he doesn't normally do that. And having someone on this side of the line that knows what they're doing is key. Do we have one more crab cake? No, no, I, you sold the last one. Oh, that's it. We don't have it. Oh, my God. That's cool. Hey, how are you guys doing? I believe this may be raw. <laughs> What's wrong? Undercooked. Undercooked. That way we deep fat frying it. This can't be normal. They surely to shed. I need an order of fried shrimp. This one was undercooked. What? Are you kidding me? David's lack of experience on the pass is resulting in lack of quality control. They wanted these two well done. Zap them. I'm fucking believing. Zap them. What's that? Four fuck ups already with them? I think it was a competition amongst the three owners to try and prove to Chef Ramsay that they knew what they were doing. And I felt Greg kind of felt out of his element because he's normally in the kitchen. I'll take this back and we'll do something about the muscles. We got Stan in the muscles. There's supposed to be sand in the steamers. That's why they get a fucking bra. I don't know, guys. So if people don't know what the fuck they're ordering, what are they ordering? David's definitely a know-it-all, and he can be a little rude. What table is that? Table eight. Thank you. Hi. You had the uh, clam bake, and there was a problem with the mussels or the steamers? Both. They're terribly sand. Yeah, there should be sand in the steamer. There often is, and that's why you have the broth to dip them in. So what would you like instead of those? Uh, nothing. In fact, I'll just eat the lobster. I'm fine. Okay, it'll be right out. Uh, we just reprimanded. I do not think that Chef Ramsay likes David because Chef Ramsay has a bullshit detector, and David can be full of it sometimes. What happened? Thanks, Chef. No, they're done. They're done. Yeah, they just didn't like it. Jesus Christ. That's the funniest fish and chips I've ever seen in my life, you know that? What happened? I just smell inside there, mm. will you please? Phil, two seconds. Smell it smells all right to me. It's from the sink. What do you smell, Phil? It smells old. Why didn't they eat it? I don't know, Gordon. Yeah, do you ever ask yourself that question? I don't. I ask I myself that question all the time. I suppose you actually don't give a fuck, you know that? I do give a fuck, I've and you know seen... I give a fuck. You seem a very relaxed man with your restaurant. What do you want me to do? I disagree. It doesn't smell bad to me, the fish. I've uh -huh. just given a piece to your chef. Yeah. The piece was stinking. It wasn't stinking. You're blind, my friend. No. If you're not blind, you're fucking clueless. You know that. Now the owner said it's not stinking. It's fragrant, fresh, and perfect. That's why it came back, right? Massage his ego. Concerned about the quality control of the food yeah, show me around. and the truthfulness of the owner, Gordon wants to do a little investigating. They're all from Maine. These are uh, Maine, some from Canada. They look Canadian lobsters to me. Yeah, these are Canadian. Yeah. So the Canadian lobsters, they're always a lot cheaper. I use the Canadian lobsters for raviolis and tagliatelles and spaghetti, but they're not Maine lobsters. After a disappointing dinner service comes to an end, Gordon is ready to share some of his initial observations. Tough day today. And I'm, um, I'm deeply concerned. I see a ship here that is rudderless. And maybe that was the first time that all three of you were working inside this restaurant in a long time. Tonight showed. When was the last time you expedited? All the time I'm back there. You were not, you're not really back there as much as you were I'm, back there tonight. No, not never, because it's never been that. We've never had the whole lineup, the whole line with tickets, ever. David, can you stop being a slippery eel for 15 minutes in front of your team and answer the fucking truth? Gordon, the fucking truth is that yes. I'm back there when it's busy every fucking night that I work. I think a lot of what Chef Ramsay's had to say about David was fairly true. I don't believe that David shows that he cares. OK, I've, uh, I've seen enough today. I've got to go and start really seriously fucking understanding, you know, how to get a direction within this restaurant. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Good night. Uh, David. Yeah? You tell me about the passion with the main lobster. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Same water as North Atlantic waters. <laughs> You're telling me now a Canadian lobster, half the price of a Maine lobster, is the same taste and flavor? There's a big difference. 
I can't get Maine lobsters. That's right, so they get yeah. them from Canada. I'm using Canadian lobsters. That's right, that's what they do. But, the but price... I don't advertise them as Maine. Tell me, is it a different animal? Maine mm -hmm. is a Canadian lobster for you. Amartus Americanus, same animal, right? Holy shit. I'm asking you a question. What you're trying to dictate to me is that you're selling Maine lobster. They're not from Maine. Well, it comes from the same vendor. Holy shit. The award-winning Maine lobster roll is Canadian. He was wrong about the lobster issues. It pissed me off. I thought that was a bit unfair for him to take that stand, and especially since he was incorrect about it. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. That was fun. Incredible. It's a new day, and Gordon has organized a staff meeting. How are we? Good. A rarity here at Black Pearl, as there have not been any meetings in the last seven months. OK. A quick exercise. So, I want to find out how you feel. We're going to write anonymous questions. When you write, make sure you put the name you want the question to at the top of it. Fold it up and put it straight in the pot. OK. Greg, how come you waffle with your answers? Well, basically, I try to keep everybody happy because otherwise I wouldn't have a staff. And that's why I sometimes waffle and go back and forth. But if you had a, a little bit stricter philosophy yeah, for Yeah, I could definitely things. be stricter. Oh, yeah, I could definitely be stricter. Thanks for being honest. OK. David, why haven't we got aprons? They know where the aprons are. They just don't choose to wear them. But why can't you say it's policy to be in an apron? Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Why can't you ask my question without a question? I did answer your question. You did? That is quintessential David. He'll answer you with the question. So to communicate with him can be very frustrating. David, show the girls some respect, will you? You're great at beating around the bush, you know that? No. Yeah. Huh? In front of everybody, why can't you answer the fucking question? I thought I did answer the question. Rather than trying to be such a smart ass and answer another question. I did answer the question. Do you know what I've just discovered? Hmm. You're so full of fucking shit, you'd make a great politician, you know that? David has the biggest ego. He's very stubborn. And obviously, you're not doing everything correct. So get over yourself and allow somebody to help you. Incredible. I'm fucking surprised you've got anybody working for you. Over the last half hour, you all look so, so cool as if you don't give a fuck. It's disgusting. And finally, to all three owners, why don't we have one general manager? What are they crying out for? Greg. Crying out for direction. They need a rudder. Make it one of the three. Why can't it be just one of the three owners? Thank you. Absolutely critical. One voice. One direction. So who's committed? I believe that I'm capable of doing it. Uh, but now I have to follow through and do it. I think Brian and David will get on board. I'm going to get some fresh air. I'll see you later. As the owners were contemplating which one of them should be the hands-on manager, Chef Ramsay decided to generate some excitement for tonight's dinner service by adding a new special. OK. Yep. Right, time for a new beginning. OK. The secret of this dish is the lobster bernays, lobster they're going to eat first. Underneath is breadcrumbs, potatoes, and a hint of rosemary. First off, the membrane and the inside of the lobster, out. We said this one, open and out. OK, done. And our potatoes. OK, get the potatoes nice and crispy. Yeah. Put our breadcrumbs in there. Two thirds potato, one third breadcrumbs. OK, now they're starting to colour. OK, good. Out. And lightly fried. OK, line the shell with that. Now, I want to see it ooze lobster. OK, on, and then we'll go with our sauce. Absolutely delicious. And then in the salamander, OK? This is a absolute pleasure to have him in here and showing us things, and we learned a lot. Mmm, lobster. I would pay $40 for that, yes? Right, get some forks in. Let's have a little taste. A little bit of pecorino, lightly over the top. It's delicious. I'm not blowing smoke at my ass, but that was fucking delicious. <laughs> it is great. I'm it's not very good. It. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Long day today. I want to try something for tonight. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to run in the place for an hour. OK. You expedite, and then you switch. And I want to see one person step up to the mark and take control of the ship. 
Unfortunately, the appendix out of all three of you is Brian. We don't need him. He's a nice guy and all that, but nice guys don't run restaurants. OK? All right. Thank you. David's going to be expedited for the first hour. Then we're going to switch back. If I have the choice of Greg or David, I would definitely prefer Greg, because I think he's a really nice person and great to work with. What's up? You get to go home. Really? Yeah. OK. All right. Am I out of here? Do you mind? I, I don't. I mean, is, you don't mind. That's great. Is, no. it, is it all right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely fine. Don't take it personally. Get up a relaxed evening. Yes. All right. Excellent. I felt a little uncomfortable being pulled from my own restaurant, but I get to go home. Not much longer. Open up. Open, open, open. You ready, guy? OK. Hi there. Welcome to Black Pearl. Right this way, ladies. All right, you guys enjoy. Ready to rock. Thank you very much. And roll. The specials for today um, are on the front left. It's a, a one and a quarter pound lobster split in half, and then with the Bernay sauce on top of that. It's delicious, I have to say. It was really good. <laughs> Maru, next time you come back, would you bring me a diet soda in it? Mix a little bit of club soda in it, too, if it's not quite so sweet. Here, let me uh, get that out of your way. You want um, these? You want to keep no, these or no, take no, those no. away? OK. And don't just put the club soda at the end, because then it won't have the mixture. But, you know, mix it in. Thank you. Take care now. Good to meet you. So I have two fish and chips, table 36. Oh, how about I rip your fucking heart out? <laughs> Why? When David's expediting orders, sometimes I'm a little nervous about going into the kitchen to ask about my tables, because he'll just bite back at you. I, fi I, I fired this one, so. Yep, yeah, but no, that's why it's over there. All right. Talk to me like I'm a real person, not like I'm an idiot. David, I just want to remind you of this one I wrote, gluten-free. I got it. We're all set. We have several brains in here. Oh, my god. Uh, keep an eye. I'm going to go switch with Greg. Switch. OK. Right, we're halfway through service, and uh, Greg's on the hot plate now. I can't wait to see what happens. But personally, once a waffler, always a waffler. We'll find out. Muscles, Bangkok, thank you. I can't find it. Bangkok, Bangkok. There they are. That it is. You coming or going? Coming? How many are you? Five. Five. Under what name? Jackson. David sometimes can uh, patronize the customers a little bit. Jackson, five. I'd rather have someone that's going to be cordial about it than some asshole that's going to patronize everybody. Man, you guys are always annoying. Uh, Phil, this lobster roll sitting here. What's it going with? I didn't tell you it was even ready. It's waiting for a roast fillet of fish. Talk to you guys. That's know. what I'm trying to say. I mean, it's just sat there, fucking going soggy. Standards, yeah? Let's start to talk to me, too. I'm down here. It's a Blue Point, Malpec, and a Malaspina, and they said they already had it. They did. They did? Then why am I doing it again? 35? I have no clue. You can use Greg, it. Greg, we've got food backed up now. Last line of defense. Which tables don't like it? Well, it was um, my table eight and table no 30. Did they fire it? No. OK, fire it. They're waiting. They already had their oysters. Mussels with garlic, lobster, bernays. Well, it seems to be slower on the hot plate with Greg yeah. at the helm than when it does David was there. Yes, it does. It seems to be a little bit slower with Greg. Damn. Greg, I feel, is trying his best. And a bisque, no? Jesus Christ, where the hell did that go? Why don't you call it so I know what it is? What are you waiting for, Doc? Oysters. Oh, they're coming then. All right. Maybe. Where the hell did it go? I don't have a lobster bisque. It went out. Come on, get it together, man. Making it another two. This shit's fucking getting very fucking tired. Getting very fucking tired of that shit. Fuck off. Just when things seemed completely out of control. I don't have a lobster bisque. Where the hell did that go? I'm getting very fucking tired of that shit. Come on, guys. Greg settled things down in the kitchen. Put the old girl on the plate and get her out of here. All right. Thank you, sir. 86 it. And managed to get the final few plates out. That's it. Start cleaning it up. Breaking it up. Before Gordon can turn Black Pearl around, he needs to find one managing owner. So he gathers the staff to make a decision. Okay. If all of you had to choose one out of the three owners to direct and to run this place completely, who would it be? Write it down for me. OK, first person, David. Second vote, 
Greg. Third vote, Greg. Fourth vote, Greg. And finally, Greg. This is pretty significant. You know that, guys. How do you feel, Greg, if you were to run this place? I'd, I'd run it the way I think it should be run. Um, I would do a lot more with the staff, um, and I wouldn't have to justify myself all the time. All three of you have fragmented this business. David, isn't it best that we listen to the team for that cry of help rather than having to massage your own egos? I think Greg would be a perfect general manager. David is full of shit. I've heard him say many times that Greg has no idea what he's doing in a restaurant, so it will be very interesting. I'd definitely like to give it a shot, for sure. Thank you all for being on it. Thank you. Well, one thing's clear, that the staff want Greg to run this place. Even David wants Greg to run it, so that's good news. But I'm not 100% certain that Greg has the balls to run this place properly on the back of tonight's performance. But what I can tell you is the business does not need Brian. In the city that never sleeps, Chef Ramsay's team worked all through the night to transform the Black Pearl into a Manhattan hotspot. Brian, good morning. Good morning. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Everything is uniform. Oh, wow. Much better. <laughs> we haven't got three different sections with three different colors. It's not a mix and match. Oh, those are so cute. It's vibrant, classic, and inviting like it should be. Oh, this is so nice. Oh. I love the lobster. Right? It gives us a great boost. This is a, a, really, a real good shot at getting this thing up and moving the way it needs to be. David, what do you think? Column should be yellow. <laughs> Everything's reorganized. It's, you know, it's another way to do it. David, please don't touch it. Does it blow me away? No. I've got something to explain over here, something quite exciting. It was donated by the Marine Ecological Habitat. Now, I promise you, you'll never find another machine anywhere like this in New York. And David, I promise you now, between you and I, this is from Maine. <laughs> And of course, if they catch it, they eat it. Yes? I think it's terrific. <laughs> oh, got it. We're going to have all sorts of people coming in there trying to get a lobster out of that. Oh! And people will be attracted to it. You are mine! And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. As the staff enjoyed the new interior, Chef Ramsay got set to reveal another change. It looks great. Happy, everybody? Yes. 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 Now. We have to market this place. Yes. And I can't do it without the help of our special guest. Here he comes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How you doing, buddy? Manhattan's favorite lobster. Right. right. We're going to hit Times Square and get some noise on there. We're going to hand out flyers. We're going to hand out t-shirts. We're going to shout it out. OK, Louis the lobster, I'll see you in uh, Times Square in five minutes, yes? Get going, buddy, yes? And Louis. If you fuck up, you're going in the tank, OK? <laughs> Please come visit us tonight. Being in Times Square with Chef Gordon Ramsay and all those people is a terrific idea. Have a great day, yeah? Thank you very much. I'm Love. at your restaurant tonight. It's New York. The word spreads fast, so I think people will be rolling in tonight. Come visit us to the Black Pearl tonight. Going to Times Square with a lobster guy and where all the tourists are and tell them to come down and eat at your restaurant, hey, we're not going to see any effect from that. I'd be really surprised. Oh, we I love you so guys tonight. tonight. Only hours before the doors open for relaunch, Chef Ramsay wants to get everyone up to speed on the new menu. OK, start off from the top. Uh, we'll go through each and every dish, and then we'll have a little taste after, OK? OK, good. Right, two chowders, yes? Uh, Manhattan clam chowder and New England clam chowder, yeah? The lobster roll, black pearl uh, special. And it's going to be toasted on the inside as well, OK? So it doesn't go soggy. And then we go to the Boston cream pie and uh, a waffle sundae. It's fresh, it's vibrant. Standards are going to be set tonight, and the kitchen's going to be properly run. OK, good. I'm going to get changed. Get some knife and forks. Start tasting. Ceviche, majorly trendy. You taste the ceviche? It's so good. Oh, Not very good. I don't like it. Mm, really? Those scallops were so good. Oh, my god. This looks like heaven. I don't like that shrimp thing, either. That's amazing. Ah, and that's good, too. What kind of fish is it? It's codfish? Didn't... Yeah. I don't really like that. 
Coming up. We had a great call slot. David continues his tirade against Gordon. That's ridiculous. And. Note to Greg. You're now running this place. Our puppet dictator. Greg tries to handle the restaurant on his own. She wants a salad. Give her a salad. Just tell me that. Ah. Oh, my God. Do Brian and David help out? Service sucks here. Got a gun? And has Gordon... This is real for me. ...finally been pushed too far? You're not passionate. Fuck you, Gordon. You're ungrateful. So what? You're soulless. You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you, too. You're not going to believe what happens. You're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. That's all coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. With relaunch night upon them, Gordon gathers the owners to implement his biggest change. When you think back to the beginning of the week, it's been a bit sort of tempestuous. But we did come to consensus on who should be running this restaurant. This is a document basically outlining that all three of you are happy for Greg to be running this Black Pearl. Could you just read it out for me? We, the partners, David Leonard, Greg Ryan, and Brian Woods, uh -huh. agree to name Greg Ryan as the managing partner of the Black Pearl, at which time decisions involving bigger issues arise, Greg must call a meeting to present the proposed changes to all of the owners. A majority rule will determine whether or not the proposed changes should be made. That's it. Excellent. Who would like to sign first? My name's first. I'll sign first. I don't know if I have more faith in Greg. So if Greg succeeds, that'll be great. Wonderful. There you go. So you're now running this place. I am. Yeah, good. David, Brian, tonight you're coming as guests. All right. 6.30, table's booked. I'll see you later. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now get the fuck out of here. I definitely feel that I'm in control now uh, and that I'm going to run the business the way I think the business needs to be run. All right, guys, we're going to have a big night tonight. We have a beautiful new restaurant. We have wonderful new menu and we're gonna have a lot of people in tonight and that's the best thing that can happen here anyway <laughs> so please everybody have a great time do a good job and we're gonna be great okay yeah thank you party of five party of five hi this week Make sure the waiters get the customers up to have a little go at pulling the lobsters out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, 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 I will right now. And then we'll yes. let you have them. Yes. Make sure, make sure we get the customers up to play uh, lobsterama. We are encouraging customers to try for a lobster. Because if you catch one, we steam it for you, and it's free. Oh. 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 Here we go. First course, New England clam chowder, field greens, and tuna ceviche. It's a big night tonight, and this is Greg's chance now to step up to the mark and prove to him and his two partners that he's capable of running this business. We've got to flip tables, we're going to be in a lot of pressure, and more importantly, the kitchen has a menu streamlined they can push out quickly. Only time will tell. Grilled swordfish and a, uh... And a burger. And a burger, burger. thank medium you. Medium and medium rare and swordfish. You took the wrong table. What did I take? Where'd it go? Gordon, I introduce you to my closest friends in the world. Nice. Are you as stubborn as this one? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, no. probably. Nice. Gordon, I'm a guest. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, yes. Uh, welcome. Come in, come out of the cold, please. We got a hostess over here, please. As customers roll in, the kitchen is about to be slammed with orders, and Greg and his kitchen staff are about to face their first big test. I need a chicken, a slider, a Bernays, and a two fries. Also, another fish soup, another burger medium. You're killing me, chef. You're killing me. The lantern. Those things are terrible. I'm supposed to put candles. Three chickens, four sword. Thank you. I'm table one. With table one. Sub salad. Where? They got the what combo. table? Table one. So what do they want? Instead of fries, she wanted a salad. Have it. I first saw the tank part, and I said, we got us a fucking lobster tank? The only one in New York. What does that tell you? What can we do? Anything? Got a gun? What's the matter? On table 27, yes. I put in the pearls and appetizer, and yes. I did not fire their entrees yet, and they're getting their entrees. Ah, yeah. shit. Come on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, B3, come on. this is all B3. B3, right here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Service sucks here. Kitchen must be fucking buried. Oh. I got grilled swordfish, two soups, two seafood casseroles. I can't cook for two people calling orders. I don't give a shit. Just make it. You son of a bitch. I'll take this back, and I'll see what we can do about that, all right? 34 said he got a New England clam chowder. Give me a break. I need a Manhattan clam. I mean, a New England clam chowder now. Jeez. Tonight has been like a clusterfuck again. The kitchen got backed up. It took forever for all of our food to come out. Come on, Greg. We've got to run it. We're falling behind in there. Come on. It's ridiculous. 
That lobster salad's been sat down there for fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, What's going on? Yeah, it's supposed to go out with this table right here. Come on. Here. The uh, coleslaw, very different from ours. We had a great coleslaw. Come we on. had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. Greg, you told me 33 for the fish and chips. I did not tell you 33. I didn't tell you anything. Oh, my God. You got a pen. I got to rent this down. Note to Greg, our puppet dictator. So she wants a salad. Yeah. Give her a salad. That's all. Just tell me that. Ah. I ordered a medium rare. Where do you go? What do you need? Medium rare. Fuck. Uh, what does she want, this medium? Where the fuck is sick? Why guys? don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. I got grilled swordfish, two soups, a sirloin burger, two lobster rolls. How many times can I call it? All right, I need table 20. I need table 1. I need, I need table 9. I got shit getting cold. It's been a chaotic evening. Right there, right there. It's going out the door right now. And the kitchen has been on the brink of disaster. Come on, you guys. You got to sell your kitchen, too. We can't do it all for you, right? But Greg has not given up. Get him organized. And neither has his staff. I need three of these right off the bat. Just stack them up there. I'm going to 36. I'll be back. Excuse me? Who's the blueberry crumble people? Okay. What's the feedback from the table? Everyone really likes the food, even though it's taken a while to get there. Without having David O'Brien around, it was actually all right. It was pretty good. The staff worked very well together, and so that made me feel good all night long. The lobster was really good. Nice and buttery. You might have to do another waffle thing. Yeah, I could have about four more waffles. I'm not sure I need all right, We've got one ticket left. Greg's doing really good. He's making decisions like right and left, and that's a big chain. High five, you guys. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen two, three months from now after Chef Ramsay is left. After a tough relaunch dinner, Gordon gathers David, Brian, and Greg to give his final words of advice. Tonight, you stood on that hot plate and you busted your ass off all night long. Mate, you've got a big heart. Fuck me if you've got passion. Thank you. But whilst you've got the hunger and the passion, I don't think your two partners actually give a damn. You are an honest individual. You're here two days a week. But you don't put the effort in. You amaze me. What? Because all week long, face to face, you fucking pretend to care. Oh, fuck, Gordon, come on. You don't give two fucks about this place. Really? You're not passionate about running a restaurant. Really? You're just abusing it and using it. I, what, 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 what did I do? I've never met an individual that's so full of shit in all my life. How have I been lying to you, Gordy? How? Tell me. Gordy? Yeah, how? You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you, too. But tell me how, you, you, tell me, tell me how I'm I've been lying I'm not disrespecting you. I'm telling you the truth. No, you disrespect me because you don't know the truth. You're just massaging your fucking ego. Gordon, bullshit. What do you mean, bullshit? It's not true. From the first minute you walked in this fucking door, standing there with your big long coat and your fucking sunglasses, looking like proud cock, that was it, first impressions. Then you start debating lobsters because you think you're some smart ass on the back of a few fucking shit dive books. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Amartus Americanus, same animal, right? Humanus Americanus, my arsos. Hmm. With 21 restaurants under my belt, I work my fucking ass off. So what? So what? And I never take anything for granted. Fascinating, Gordon. You treat the staff like shit. You yeah. amaze me. Never did that. Excuse me? Never. Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Never. You can't even be honest with yourself, let alone me. Mate, you've been exposed. Oh, yeah, exposed. You're a hypocrite. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. For you, it's about a fucking TV show. This man is about a restaurant. Fuck the TV, David. And I mean, fuck it. This is real for me. And for you, it's an image. I disagree with you on almost everything you said. You do? Yeah, I do. Why do you disagree? Because you're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. You're a sad fuck. My advice is for him to get his partners, get your money out, yeah? and disappear. Yeah, all right, well, my advice would be for you to disappear, and the sooner the better. You don't get it, do you? Well, fuck you, Gordon. Of course I get it. This question has every chance of succeeding, but not while you are in it. Because you're not passionate. You're soulless. Say what you like. Let me get out of here. You're ungrateful. 
do you know what really hurts? The amount of effort that's gone into it. Despite what a prick you've been to me, I'm still grateful that you were here. I love what you've done. I think that the menu is brilliant. You know, I, I don't like it. I don't really like that. I don't like that shrimp thing either. It's what happens when I've gone. We had a great coleslaw. Come on, great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. The minute I'm out of that door, you'll slip back into I'll the old tell you what. I'll tell lazy you what. ways. Why don't you come back in, and you know, I'm sure you will, and see how it goes. Yeah. Time will tell. I guess it will. Thanks again, Gordon. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. That's tough. I mean, really tough. And personally, I've got mixed feelings about this week because I so want this to succeed for Greg because he's got the determination, the guts to make it work. But on the other hand, David, well, I think he's just opened a restaurant because he wants to make a quick buck. And that is not the reason to open a restaurant. That man has no passion. Tough.